back to another video. Okay, so today's video is going to be 101 in blinging up a space. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this video, and if you hear that that sound, sound like money, ching ching, that's because I'm selling stuff on OfferUp. Okay, so the reason for this video is because initially when I did my room by room tour, I showed you ways that I incorporated glamorous and blingy things to get that glam look and that mirrored look that, you know, is so hot and trendy right now. However, I skipped and missed a lot of things in the video and I then started getting questions like the same questions over and over again. And I realized that's my fault um, because a lot of things I didn't mention or didn't go over or didn't go in detail about. So this video is going to be a very informal, like we always do, walkthrough of the entire space. And I'm going to, I left things out so that I can remember what to address. So... That being said, this is um, 101 in glam and bling and doing it on a budget by way of Sharon She's So Fabulous. So it's going to be a little bit redundant, but I'm not going to go into specifics about all everything. It's just going to be certain things that I need to touch on that I keep getting the same questions about, basically. So I'm back right here in the foyer where I was initially with the video. And what I did not really go into detail about, which was the whole basis for the video, was how I glammed up my space on a budget. Now, we talked about the mirrored furniture and things of that nature. Now, everybody can't run out and buy a piece of mirrored furniture because they can be pricey, but they are beautiful in their own right. This is a more inexpensive piece of mirrored furniture that came from the at-home store. Now, you may see a lot of YouTubers doing room tours and they may be showing you parts or pieces from the Hayworth collection at Pier 1, which is absolutely beautiful. Do not get me wrong. Um, and at the right price, if I called it, I would probably purchase something if it was, you know, interesting to me. However, the budget-friendly shopper or the budget-friendly DIYer sometimes can't do Hayworth. Okay, and so the purpose of this video is to show you ways that you can still get that same look for a fraction of the cost. So again, this mirror chest, very inexpensive, still serves the same purpose, still gives me um, that look I'm going for, and it to me doesn't look poor quality. Okay, and this is an at-home store purchase. Um, I mentioned to you that another way to bring in the glamorous mirrored effect was through accessories. You don't always have to buy pieces like that. You can bring in the same effect I told you by pieces like this and little mirrored trays like that and pieces that had mixtures of elements, metals, and woods. Whether it be silver or gold, whichever your metal of choice is, this is a great way to bring that into a space. And spray paint. If you found a mirror, say a mirror like this or, or some kind of mirror and it had a detail and you liked it and it wasn't quite your color, spray paint. That's your best friend. I told you, mirrors were my best friend. I would rather decorate with a mirror any day almost over art, to be honest with you. And now that mirrors are coming like this with little intricate details and designs it makes them even more glamorous so yet another way to add glamour into your space without breaking the bank now these are of a more plastic material with a little mirror cuts on them okay they to me don't look cheap and in a grouping like this paired with an area like this to me gives it a little more value than it than I paid for, which was about six or seven dollars, somewhere around there, on clearance because one of the little mirrors are missing. Okay. So let's go on upstairs back into the living room. 
I was getting a lot of questions about, Sharon, what type of paint do you use when painting your furniture? Now, I made a mistake in my tour video and said I spray painted this. I did not spray paint this. I'm sorry. Most of all of, actually, the bigger pieces of furniture that I have, and I'm going to show them to you, are chalk painted. This chalk paint that is on this particular piece here is the Lowe's brand chalk paint and the wax. I personally like using chalk paint because one, you don't have to sand most of the time. So it cuts down that whole sanding process that you'd normally have to do. Now sanding comes into play when you have raised areas that need to be smoothed out or, or a piece you might find that excuse me, may have water damage or unevenness. Sanding comes into play in those areas. But if you find a good piece, the bones are good, there's nothing that really needs to be sanded, chalk paint. That's just my preference, okay? There's a million brands of actual furniture paint, specifically for painting furniture. I personally like chalk paint because one... There's no brush strokes. It pretty much evens itself out. And I like the creamy texture and finish that it gives. Now, I know a lot of people that use chalk paint when they are distressing items. They're really good for distressing items, sanding down the raised areas of a piece. Say, for instance, if I wanted this to be distressed. Distress look is not really my thing, but I do think it's pretty um, in some areas. Say like somebody that was distressing would the raised pieces that are raised that you see here, they would sand those down in areas to give that weathered look that's out and hot as well so that the color underneath would show through. So this wasn't spray painted. My mistake in saying that in that video this is chalk paint, and it's the Lowe's brand chalk paint. I put uh, two coats of wax on it, buffed it down to, you know, protect it against spills and be able to clean it. Um, same thing over here with my little end tables. This coffee table, I did spray paint. This is probably the only piece that actually got true spray paint throughout. And the only reason I spray painted it and didn't paint it was because just an open frame. So it was much easier to spray paint it and then go over it with a clear coat of uh, spray paint to seal it and make it easier to clean, wipe off, and repel spills. Um, I didn't mention in the video about this tray which I purchased from Home Goods, And I love putting trays on tables, um, on areas like this, as well to glam up a space, like the end of your sectional piece or an ottoman, i.e. like the one downstairs. We'll go look at that in a second. This right here is uh, the DIY uh, candle stand from using the, the candlesticks from the Dollar Tree. This one and this one. I just made this one with two pieces, two candlesticks on this one. And then I used the plate and then the little mirrors that they sell up at the top. Okay? And then on this one, I left the plate out and just used just the little octagon-shaped type mirror there. Okay, so this this tray is, uh, and it looks just like the chair actually in the kitchen. So it's like a navy blue and white. That tray probably was nineteen ninety nine at the uh, at Home Goods. Okay, so back to the mirrored furniture and the glam factor. Glass products like the like the candle stands, not necessarily these candle stands, but just glass itself see-through transparent things give an a, a, um, a glamorous effect okay the white flowers or any color flowers in bunches give a glam effect in my opinion 
You can create your own mirrored furniture, as I did here. Originally, I told you the lady I purchased this from off of OfferUp, when she had it in her day, it was see-through glass. The see-through glasses. And Lowe's, if you purchase mirror from them, they will cut it for you for free. And you can create your own mirrored furniture at a fraction of the cost you would go and paying for it at a furniture store. Now, if that's your thing, kudos to you. But for us DIYers and us budget-friendly girls and guys, this is a very inexpensive way to create your own look with the and get the same glam effect. It's all in what you do with it and how you do it when you do it, okay? So the tray there, I have a lot of items corralled together in there. Um... When doing trays like this, it is in my opinion that you play around with height and dimension. Have some things that are taller than others and then some things that are shorter than others. And professional decorators will tell you to always add something to your coffee table that's personal to you. Okay? And so... Coffee table books, great way to add in color, glam, and that magazine-ish look. Now, I'm, I'm using actual magazines, but home decor magazines as my pops of color. Um, you can look at them while you're sitting here for entertainment. They got good colored pictures in them. Um, and my something personal is this little ceramic owl because I love owls. Okay? The mirrored box here, this jury box. Okay, I showed you that in the video, but this is another way to add in not only height and dimension because that flower would have been shorter had he not been on there, and that adds a very nice amount of glam because it's mirrored, but not, you know, over the top and doing too much. So again, accessories. Remember my little Craigslist table? Okay, I showed you. I didn't have these mirrors on there when I first did the uh, tour. I went back to Lowe's after I filmed that. And again, they cut it for you as long as you purchase it from them. This table, look, I even had them to do the little strips in the front. Okay? All I did was measured it and took the measurements to Lowe's, turned this table into my own little mirror table. Now, I could have had a piece cut for the top, but because I already had the mirrored tray on there, I didn't want to overkill, and I let that be the mirrored item on top and that bling factor there. Totally changed the look of this table, and again, it's a Craigslist table. I got those two mirrors in, you, in the front here, the two on the sides, and oh, let me come over here. And this same thing done on this one. And I don't, I promise you, I didn't pay $24 for all this mirror that was cut. I didn't pay $24 to do two tables. And even when I had these mirrors cut for this, uh, I don't even think that was 20 bucks to get this mirror cut down to these four squares. And I, I can't remember the measurements on them, but it's a nice size. Okay? So, adding in some glam and bling to your space without overkill or in an inexpensive way, again, I told you, was to bring in the chrome or the color, that metal in which you like, whether it be gold or silver. Here, I just, again, still ain't putting nothing in there, child. Um, but mixing the two, I have height dimension going. So I have something white to break up the coldness of these two chrome pieces. So frames are a very inexpensive way to bring in glam. The mirrored frames or just shiny frames, textured frames, textured vases like this. Threw in those Dollar Tree pink flowers and instantly that little corner is glam to me. Same thing over here. Still ain't putting nothing in that one either. But 
was about the frame. So a little mirrored frame that has a little bit of detail to it, a little bit, a little, little bit of intricacy going on. Great way to add in some glam and bling without overdoing it. And you know frames at like Home Goods Dollar Dollar um not Dollar Tree Home Goods um TJ Maxx Marshalls inexpensive inexpensive M mixing it up. Mixing it up because you don't want to overkill. You want to bring in that element of, of shine that you like, but you want to break it up by adding in something else. Now, I could have used a wood piece back there, which would have given a different texture. I just happen to like white porcelain items. And so, again, I played around with shapes and heights. Threw in those Dollar Tree flowers. Boom. Glam. Already, I did change this corner out over here though. Um, I threw those white little throws that I had laying around on the other chairs. I just put them in here over here, and I got a DIY for you guys coming up right after this video that I'm gonna add to this little area to glam it up some more for free. Okay, so and again, you know the mirrors, um, wallpaper. Now, if you are in an apartment or you're renting and you can't really do stuff like, say, wallpaper of this magnitude, there's wallpaper or a, or a wallpaper type of material that uh, Target sells. And it's the sticky wallpaper. Comes right off. Now, this is the real deal Holyfield right here the paste and all of that stuff. So whenever, if I ever decide to take it down, which will be never, um, I'm going to really have to use whatever that is to take wallpaper down. But now the other wallpaper that like Target sells that's already sticky, like a big sticker, that peels right back off. So you could use that as a temporary way to give yourself an accent wall if you are a renter and don't want to commit to say permanent wallpaper like such okay so that's that let's see what else so furniture you guys chalk paint is what i normally use i'll show you something that i've used any sloan chalk paint on it is in my opinion that i got the same result i paid way more for the annie sloan chalk paint and her wax as opposed to the lowe's home improvement brand I got the same exact result. So you choose which you think is going to be best for you if that's the case. Um, I got a lot of questions about this cutout right here that I done. Um, yes, I did cut this out myself. I am Bob the Builder's little sister. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, what I did was on the... Wait, before we get to that, let me go back over here first. We still in Bling 101. Okay, so... Couch pillows, great way to add in texture, great way to bling, bring in some bling, shine, and sparkle, i.e. pillows like this, okay? Pillows of different textures that you put together instantly give you a magazine look, okay? And we all know that we can find some good price pillows at some of our favorite um, home decor stores, okay? Um, you can embellish your own pillows, if you found a plain pillow that you liked, you could do this yourself. Luckily for me, it was already bought like that and it was cheap. But you could embellish your own pillows. Again, adding in frames that have shine that are of different sizes and textures. Mirrored frame here, very inexpensive. This one is a different type. It's got a little bit of um, beading around it. Those are my little grandbabies, ain't they? Cute as a button. That's king. Let me go and tell you. That's third over here on my left. That's king in the middle. And that's Mama Kai on the end. My three little biscuits. Okay, so again, sparkly items, mosaic items, little pieces of mirror. You could create this yourself. Let's say you found a vase that you really liked at a thrift store. You do know you could break up some glass or go to, um, I think, the craft stores sell already cut little pieces of glass or plastic glass-like material that if you had the time, you could just 
adhere to that piece and create your own mosaic piece. I'll show you something I've done here in just a moment. That's another Dollar Tree DIY there. Again, those frames there, different textures. And notice how I broke them up, okay? Greenery here to soften up the area, okay? And then I have my chrome-ish type of frame, which is a different texture. But then I came in with some glass, okay? which is still another way to glam up a space. Glass, translucent things, in my opinion. Then another frame, okay? Then I broke it up with this guy. And then so forth and so on. So you breaking it up by adding different textures, different heights, or just different styles all together. Great way to add that bling. Okay, so back to this cutout right here. Um, Initially, when I cut this out, I actually need to go in the kitchen to show you because this is where it all began. I was in the kitchen. Uh, quick story, cooking. My little girl, my girls were little at the time. We had just moved into this house probably. We may have been here maybe two years. Now I'm over here cooking. That's closed off. And I'm trying to listen to what they saying in the living room. And I kept saying, huh? What y'all saying? I can't hear y'all. And it was, it just came to me right that night. And it was probably like 8, 9 o'clock at night. All I did was, first of all, I pulled out my floor plan that they give you when you pick out your house over here to get it built. They give you a little floor plan of all your rooms and the, the sizes and the walls and the da 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 And I pulled it out and looked at this wall because I know walls in your house, certain walls are load-bearing walls, meaning they hold your house up. So, I didn't want to go chopping all into this wall, honey. And then, um, you know what I'm saying? I had to get my house rebuilt. So, I looked at that plan and saw that it was a load-bearing wall, but it had it circled that this little corner right here is where most of the weight is being held at. Okay? So, sometimes you can have a partial load-bearing wall or a full-on load-bearing wall. This is a partial load-bearing wall, but this is where all the weight of the house is being held at in this structure right here. The entrance to the kitchen area and then down to this part of the wall here is where the weight is being held. So I knew I was safe in coming on the opposite side of the, the major part of the weight and going across. I took a pencil. And I marked this out. It started out a little smaller hole. First, it was just a little smaller hole. Then I thought, girl, go big or go home. So I sketched it out with a pencil on the wall. That night, I took a hammer and began to beat the drywall off from this side to see what was inside of it. Okay, I saw the studs. I came on the other side. And I beat that, beat that side out. Beat the drywall off that side till I got down to the studs. So now I just got a hole and some studs, and I can see through the studs at that time. I took a reciprocating saw, and I cut the studs up to here, and then I cut the ones down to there, all even, straight across. Went to Lowe's, and then I bought all the wood, the heavy-duty wood, so there's like... Actually, there's like three layers of wood in here to reinforce this. Um, and that's what I did. I just reinforced it all the way back around to make sure that it was still able to hold the weight, being that I had taken some away some of the wall. And it's been here for, I don't know, maybe 11 years now. No problems. So that's how I did that. Okay, questions about the table. Craigslist table. Right? Solid wood. I sanded it down. And let me show you. I meant to. That's one thing I forgot. I told you this is informal, y'all. So just bear with me. All right. So Craigslist table. I sanded it down to its natural state. And I wanted you to still be able to see all of this beautiful wood grain in here. But I did not want it to be white like the um, like everything else. So this is the product that I use right here from Sharon Williams. 
This is an oil stain in the color pickled white. And it basically is just like a white wash. It just, it just gave it a weathered look in a sense. It allowed my grains to still pop through. And you can still kind of sort of see the natural wood tone that I reached when I sanded her down. So that's the product that I used on this table here. And yeah, y'all, I know a lot of y'all like that mirror idea for the runner. Which is, again, another way to reflect the light from the chandelier and add a bit of glam and unexpectancy. Again, another one of those candlesticks. Child went crazy with them Dollar Tree candlesticks, huh? They are nice. And to me, they look better than them, which is the ones that I purchased from um, Ross. They just look a little bit more in detail. I don't know, a little bit more elegant. But then to glass, like I said, adds in that texture. Okay, so that's what, what that is. And again, mirrors, chandeliers, okay. And this is a DIY I got planned for you guys after I'm done with this video. Look, still ain't put my plates on yet, but I'm going to do it today because I'm off work and today is task day. So I got them laid out so I'll know to put them all on where they go. Um, only thing different in here is I did change out my uh, bowl. Look, this is what I got out of my garden yesterday, girl. Okay, that's what my garden produced. Little bell pepper, son. Yeah, so I put that white bowl there. Um, I got questions about this countertop, painting the countertop. Okay, this is the paint I told you guys I used Kiehl's for the primer. I put about 10 coats of Kiehl's on here to make it white, white, white because it was super, super dark, okay? This is the craft paint that I used in various colors of gray. You all, y'all true crafters, y'all got this right now in y'all craft room or in a box somewhere, okay? I just used different shades of it, put it on a paper plate, mixed it all up, um, took a paper bag and a little cheap inexpensive brush and created this look dab 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 to kind of blend 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 and mix the colors together used a little cheap um paint brush to kind of give the lines and the veining effect or whatnot so that's what i use on the cabinet and i use literally about 10 or 12 coats maybe even of clear polyurethane to seal it and make it durable to use just like you would in your kitchen okay so that's what that is from i'm trying to think oh i didn't mention these curtains okay these curtains are actually the bottom part of these curtains or did i mention it i don't know these curtains came from target i told you that in the video and i can't remember what i paid for them but i was in target one day you know perusing like i do and ran across them, put on clearance. And I only wanted the bottom half of it for this top part of the window up here. So I just cut it off, did a no 